We are a travel channel, an RV channel, if you will. But today we're going to go off topic. And the reason we're going to go off topic is because I had a significant life event. And I wanted to share the story and raise a little bit of awareness for those of you who may be exposed to the type of situation that I was recently exposed or to. Or know somebody who, who is. Exactly. Or could be. A couple of months ago, I started feeling badly, like out of the blue, just yeah. really started feeling bad. Um, the symptoms that I started getting was like swollen glands, mm -hmm. swollen thyroid, yeah, very fatigued, tired, drained, just really didn't feel like doing anything. Yeah, And I really couldn't explain what was going on. We were in California at the time, mm -hmm. um, in the middle of nowhere, and yeah. uh, so I waited a few days just drinking water you know taking motrin trying to get the fatigue and stuff try to get the swelling to go down i was taking cold medicine i usually yeah. just didn't know what was going on mm -hmm. so four days later i still was feeling bad feeling worse even yes and so i went to an urgent care yeah i went to an urgent care and he did a little exam and he said you got swollen glands you probably got some kind of a viral infection um they tested me for covid uh, I was not positive no. for COVID, so it wasn't COVID, no. which I was thinking that might be the, the thing, but it wasn't. Give me antibiotics. I take these antibiotics for 10 days, mm -hmm. and we'll see how it goes. Well, 10 days later, I wasn't going to be in the same area. No. It's going to be in a different area. Well, 10, 10 days go by. I take 10 days worth of antibiotics. No improvement. I was actually worse. Yeah, you were getting worse. I was getting worse. I was feeling, like, very poorly. Yeah. Um, and it's not typical of me to feel to feel bad like that. Yeah. So I went back to an urgent care at the next location that we were at. Mm -hmm. Told that doctor the whole situation. Um, she tested me for all kinds of stuff. Yeah, she just wanted to cover COVID, a bunch of things. Uh, a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Um, mono. Yeah. I mean, there was just a myriad of stuff. Uh, yeah. Ran labs, but it was your typical normal labs, like white blood cell count, you know, complete blood count. Mm -hmm. and nothing specialized, just normal labs. Yes. Everything came back normal. normal. <laughs> there was, according to the papers. You should be fine. There was nothing wrong with me. Yeah. And so I'm like, there's got to be something wrong with me. So yes, there is something. Wrong. Yeah, <laughs> went back home and I, I started turning on my medic brain, and I started thinking, what have I changed? Have I changed any detergents, deodorants, uh, medications, anything in food? Different. Yeah, I can't really narrow down anything um, environmental because we move around so much. Yes. So it could have been something like that, but to me, it really wasn't. Yeah. Um, we had no issues going on inside the RV. Nope. So I was like, man, something is wrong, and I got to thinking. I had started taking a new medication. Yes. For behavioral health. I'm a I was a combat medic for 20 years. I have PTSD. We're always chasing our tail on what kind of medications that I'm taking because yes. I will build up an immunity to it. I'll have to increase dosage. I'll have to change to different types of medications. You're very side effect sensitive. Yeah. So it's not new to me to be changing medications all the time. Yeah. So to me, that never even came right to my mind because that's my norm I'm always changing medications yes but I realized that about 12 days ago I had started this new medication called Lamictal or Lamotrigin and it's made for epilepsy yeah I was taking it off-brand for behavioral health which most medicines are used for other purposes besides yeah. the ones they were actually generated for <laughs> well and here's the kicker the kicker is it was working brilliantly it was literally probably one of the best you've ever been on i felt so good mentally yeah physically it was killing me well we didn't know at the time didn't know at the time so i do some research and i run across this story this story of a man named norman uh i think his name is buhanos i think that's how you pronounce it yeah okay yeah um he was a austin police officer a detective mm -hmm. and he was actually a former army medic yes in the in the reserves which or is national kinda... guard ironic it is well i ran across this story and this man had taken lamictal mm -hmm. for i think it was like a couple of weeks 14 yeah. to 16 days yeah and he had a lot of the same symptoms that i had and he had developed what's called hlh that's a huge long word yeah i can't even say the whole thing i'll put it at the bottom so you can see it but hlh um is a very rare side effect of this medication yes 
but, yeah, but serious and it's very difficult to diagnose yes because it has symptoms just like like I was explaining like just other things. just like a cold or a flu yeah. so but it requires early diagnosis because if it's not treated quickly it can kill you because HLH is a severe systematic inflammatory response to something in this case the medication yeah and in the research that I did after re reading Norman's story and watching the news uh, broadcast of it um, th this response can happen within 10 to 24 days of taking the medication yes I immediately rushed to the freaking <laughs> cabinet and I knew that I had a 90 day supply yeah he just like whoosh, boom I pour him out on the all. counter <laughs> and I start counting and I look and I had taken 24 days yeah of Lamictal and you can have this HLH bad inflammatory response where basically your body attacks itself and at some point it gets non-reversible yes and there's nothing you can do even with treatment at that point there's nothing, nothing that you, you can, can do. do you will die within two months yes exactly six to eight weeks if you catch it in time and it's diagnosed quickly enough it's, it's it requires chance. very aggressive treatment yes and it requires it quickly in order to save your life yeah so I'm freaking out you were freaking out he looked right up at me and he said the VA is trying to kill me so <laughs> I rushed back to the urgent care that I had seen that same day because yeah. I was reading about treatments and one of the treatments was a steroid called dexamethasone an injection yes I ran back I talked to the doctor she said I've never seen a case but it certainly could be yeah. and it, it lines up so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a shot of this dexamethasone we'll give you some oral steroids we'll draw some labs to rule out HLH because again I said they they drew the regular labs but no specialized Spec labs yeah all these specialized labs are checking for iron ferritin T4 thyroid all this yeah. stuff that are diagnostic criteria for Take HLH longer to get the results back. but yeah it takes six to ten days to get back because this is urgent care this isn't a stat lab yeah you're not in a hospital well after I got the shot, the next day I'm feeling terrible, horrible. Yeah. Like I feel like I'm gonna die, mm -hmm. and I'm convinced. You are. That I have this. You in your head, you are. You had it already. So I go to the ER. I explain this whole situation to the doctor. I said, "This is what's going on. This is the treatment that's already happened. This is what I think is happening. I took 24 days of this stuff. These are the signs and symptoms. It all lines up. I just need you to run some stat labs." these specialized labs to yeah. rule out HLH to make me feel like I'm not gonna die he said we're gonna take care of you we're gonna run a, a what he said a a battery, battery of, tests, of tests and we're gonna get you taken care of yeah 18 hours <laughs> later yeah. he comes back with my lab results and did not run a single lab that was specialized that was specialized you just ran your basic ran my basic normal lab like if you went for an annual physical gave me an antibiotic and sent me on my way <laughs> yeah so for 18 hours I sat there and got nothing done yeah you were even like admit me because they said they wouldn't do that in the ER yeah and you said well then admit me then you can have those labs done and just admit like, me run the labs yeah. and let's rule this out and let's just get it figured out yeah. they wouldn't do it no so basically I was in a waiting game for the next six to ten days waiting for my labs to come back for the urgent care to find out if I was dying or not yeah and so I had to, I'd stopped taking the Lamictal, which was a, a, risk, uh, in a risk in itself because it's an epilepsy medication and the risk of just stopping it cold turkey can cause Causes. seizures. Yes. So I'm like, well, I'm rolling that dice because this medication is obviously killing me. Yeah. And if I don't stop it, I'm going to die anyway. Yeah. We had some very serious conversations during this time. <laughs> yes, if I have did. a seizure, this is what you do. If yes. I fall over and start dying, this, this is what you do. This is where our life insurance policy is. I mean, we were having serious conversations because I had no idea if I was really dying or not. And yeah. I was, it's probably the most scared that That's, I've ever been in my life. I was about to life. say that. That was the most scared I've ever seen you. And you've had to deal with a lot of stressful situations, not yeah. just in your lifetime, but in our lifetime together. Well, and, the, and you never stressed out like that. Well, the difference is I've been to combat. And in combat, your, your fear of dying is quick. Yeah. You almost die and it's over and it's it. That's it. You're alive and you're good. But when you're sitting there for six to ten days waiting to find out if you're dying or not, yeah. that's a long time. I mean, I've seen you, I've watched you work on somebody who was dying and you were not stressed out. No. But in this situation, I was truly scared because I was like six to ten days. If if it comes back and I have ACLH, 
it might be too late. too late yeah it might be too late even if we figure it out it might be too late yeah and i might die anyway so uh a few days later i get the labs back hlh has been ruled out thank god but my labs were still off i'm not out of the woods yet no yeah. i still could have organ damage i still could have issues i could still could have long-term effects mm -hmm. from this medications so we still don't know i needed to wait a couple of weeks and get labs redrawn again yes. well in a couple of weeks we weren't going to be there anymore mm -hmm. we were going to be in vegas yeah so we get to vegas and i don't have a primary care provider in vegas yeah my primary care provider is in columbus georgia, georgia. Well, I'm calling this guy for three weeks. The whole, this whole time I'm trying to get him to order yeah, labs. That was the most frustrating part. He wouldn't call me back, wouldn't return my calls, wouldn't, uh, I couldn't get him to order labs because I couldn't get a hold of him. I got a hold of his nurse one time. Yeah. And she said, he'll call you back in a couple of days. He still didn't. I tried yeah. to explain how urgent this situation is. I need to find out if my labs are normalizing to see if I have organ damage because of this medication that I took. Exactly. So, man, it was just so frustrating with the VA. So I didn't have a primary care in Vegas, so I had to go to urgent care there. I had no choice. Yeah. And I know at urgent care, they can't order specialized labs. They can only order their regular, regular labs. labs. Yes. But anyway, I went anyway, and I talked to uh, a doctor there. Great doctor. Yes, Vegas uh, VA hospital was very wonderful. Yeah. Um, I think her name was Niemeyer or Neumeyer. N yeah. And it was crazy because super ironic, She's a subscriber. Her and her husband yes. watch our channel. She, that was crazy for her to say, <laughs> I feel like I know you from somewhere. Have we met? <laughs> that was bizarre. And that's not why she took care of me. No. Uh, she was taking care of me before, before that. that. It just yeah. happened to be. So she got me lined up with a primary care provider in Vegas who could order those labs. Got those labs ordered. Got those labs in. Got those labs back. And my labs are now starting to normalize. They were still a little off. They are still a little off. But going in the better direction just yeah. not as fast as we thought they might have and as bad as it was the communication between me and my va doc back in columbus total opposite in vegas mm -hmm. everyone at the va was so helpful yes and very willing to help even seeing me as a primary uh, pr uh in the primary care clinic as a walk-in even though i'm i don't i'm not assigned there and yeah. they're not even supposed to do that yeah they did it anyway just to help me out so i really do appreciate that for all those folks that helped me out there so it's been a couple weeks uh, since I got those labs back. Those are, are, are normalizing. Um, I still need to get labs run again. Yes. Uh, I'm just getting over COVID. Yeah, the timing was terrible because when your Georgia doctor did contact us finally, and yeah. we told him everything had gone on, he had put in the labs for you yeah. in the VA system. And he said, before you leave Vegas, just go to the lab and get them drawn. But I couldn't because I had COVID. Yeah. So I couldn't go in there. A, I couldn't go in there because they wouldn't let me in the building to get my labs drawn. And yeah. B, COVID's going to throw off my labs anyway. Exactly. So I need to know, once I get back to normal from recovering from COVID, need to get my labs drawn again. Make sure we're still going in the right direction. Make sure we're still going. And we are gradually getting better and better on the labs. And I feel better yeah. now from that. Mm little little residual from covid still yeah but uh but from from the uh from the medication um yeah i feel a lot better i reached out to amy who's the wife of of norman mm -hmm. and i didn't tell you the rest of norman's story i just told you that i heard his story but what happened was norman didn't catch it fast enough yes. and and he died yes he did. of hlh um by the time the doctors figured out what was going on with him it was too, too late far gone and he the whole time he was in the hospital with treatment he was still taking this medication yes because he had no idea that this medication was the problem and so like i said i think he did you know 14 or 16 doses and died from it and which really scared me because i took 24 Four. doses yeah you took more so i was like i certainly could be in the same situation yeah. as norman but i feel like that that story watching that story reading amy's story um just really lit a fire under me it really gave me a sense of urgency to to advocate for myself yeah to not leave the doctor's office without getting the answers and the tests that i needed it, yeah because the the night you did go to the emergency room you you were lucky they didn't have security remove you from there i was because you were so demanding so mad yeah that's the probably the 
<laughs> like I said earlier, I was probably the scaredest I've ever been in my life. Well, that day was probably the angriest yes, that yeah. I've ever been in my life because in my mind, I'm dying and, and no one's helping me. Yeah. And no one's taking me seriously. Exactly. But I was like, I'm not leaving until someone does take me so seriously. So my advice is advocate for yourself. Yes. Fight for yourself. Don't take no for an answer, especially if you think the situation is urgent like we did. Yeah. Um, man, this this drug is, is good for a lot of people. Yes. But it's dangerous. So, And it, it is a wonder that if you're going to put a patient on that even though it's such a slim chance of happening that should be the first thing you tell your patient if within the first 24 doses yeah you feel something's not right you contact me immediately we're going to have to or yeah or because this is a high risk or could be potential fatal for hlh on this medication we're going to monitor you for the first couple of weeks, make sure yeah. you're good. But none of that was discussed between me and my doctor. They just started course, this new medication and that the, was you it. You get the side effect list that's like sure. 20 pages long and you, you skim through those always, but you don't read them in depth. Exactly. You just, you're looking for the key things that are, which are the standard side effects to medications that yeah. all of them tend to have. HLH was not a standout. Yeah. So if if you have behavioral health issues, if you or doctor is talking to you about Lamictal, uh, if you know someone who has behavioral health issues who may potentially be a candidate to, to be a prescribed Lamictal, you know, please share this video because we just want to raise awareness. We want, you know, people to be aware of the risks of this medication. Yes. Like Amy and Norman's story. If I had not seen that story, I don't know that I would have even, it would have even clicked for me. I don't know that I would have stopped taking the medication. I am convinced that if I had kept taking that medication, it would have evolved into HLH. I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation with you right now. So I feel like their story saved my life. Yeah, literally. And um, like I said, I reached out to Amy because, you know, at the end of every one of our videos, we honor a fallen hero. It's normally a service member who has been killed in combat, but because of the, the topic today and because of the situation and because I feel like Norman and his story and his family's story saved my life, uh, uh, we want to, to uh, honor Norman yes. today and his service and his sacrifice. Um, and I wish we would have heard about it. I don't know how nationalized that he got attention wise. Yeah, because it was I a, don't recall a local news story in Austin is yeah. how I found it online. Yeah, but it, if it would have been shared more, yeah, maybe it would have been heard of. Um, you know, I just better. I'm I'm so thankful that 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 I'm alive. I wish that uh, they would have found this earlier in in Norman. Um, and it's just it just makes me sad yeah it makes me sad it it is but he did do good yeah his, good his is coming loss of this. life did do good because it helped us yeah so um stick around for a couple of seconds help us honor norman and his sacrifice and all that his family has gone through and uh thank you amy and yes. thank you to your family and your daughter and for your sacrifice and for sharing your story. I know that's hard to share the story, but had you not, like I said, I don't think I'd be alive. Yeah, we would not have checked that medication. And as a combat veteran, um, I don't take that lightly. When I believe someone saved my life, yeah. um, I've had people save my life before and I don't take it lightly. I don't take it for granted. And like we always do, we're gonna continue this lifestyle. We're gonna continue living every day and not taking yes. it for granted. Uh, but we just wanted to share that. Uh, sorry we got a little bit off topic from our travel and our adventures, but we felt like that was a story worth telling. Yes. And um, please share this if you have anyone who is potentially gonna be taking this medication. Absolutely. And we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.